update of Nigeria's situation of the global pandemic. Another new day in the FCT, Lagos and Ogun, as the ease on lockdown begins today. Plus more on capacity building of the nation's security architecture. These and more on Panorama, reaching you live from Abuja. I'm Elizabeth Omori. We'll be right back. Thanks for joining us. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control has announced additional 170 new cases of coronavirus in Nigeria. The latest figures released early this morning indicates that Lagos has 39 cases, Kano 29, Ogun 24, Bauchi 18, Sokoto Kaduna 15, FCT and Sokoto 12 each, Katsina 8, Brono 7, Nastarawa 3, Adamawa 2, and lastly, Oyo 1 case. As at midnight of 3rd of May 2020, Nigeria has 2,558 coronavirus cases, out of which 400 persons have recovered and 87 deaths recorded. Nigerians in the FCT, Lagos, and Ugo states are experiencing ease on lockdown after five weeks with the shutdown of business activities. Ababaka Usman Akwanga, who visited some areas in the FCT, says heavy traffic characterized major routes in the FCT. This is the first day of the partial lift on the total lockdown in the Federal Capital Territory. And the situation at the Kuba Expressway is unbelievable as motorists are trapped for several hours trying to access major routes on the express. We are supposed to go out and come back by uh, uh, 2 o'clock and now uh, if one spends all the, this time on the road and they have not even reached the office, then yes, to a certain extent, the purpose may have been defeated. We are trapped for more than an hour before the ease of traffic. Thank you, Akwanga, for your effort. Unless there is a drastic measure to prevent essential interstate travels through illegal routes around state boundaries, the desire of government to check community transmission of COVID-19 across states may not be realized. Adeni Taiwo, who was at a boundary between Ogun and Oyo states, to monitor enforcement of the ban reports that efforts of security agencies have been frustrated by the existence of numerous illegal routes. Ogun State has about 10 boundaries connecting it to four adjoining states, including Lagos, Oshun, Ondo, and Oyo. This road from Ashero in Abakuta, the Ogun State capital, takes commuters straight to Ibadan via Bakatari. Despite the ban on interstate travels by President Mahmoud Buhari, as agreed to by the Governor's Forum, these commercial bus operators and their passengers were heading towards Ibadan in Oyo State in violation of the order. I'm coming from uh, Abel Kuta, then I'm going to Ife. So how will you feel if they stop you by the road and you know, turn you back? Till that happens, I don't know what to do then. This is Bakatari. It is the community linking Ogun to Oyo State. From this point on, it will take you about 20 minutes to get to Ibadan, the capital of Oyo State. Now, what we have here is what is left of a checkpoint erected by security agencies to enforce the ban on non-essential interstate travels. Two major checkpoints manned by detachments of security operatives from Ogun and Oyo State are working hard at the boundary to enforce the ban by turning back on authorized vehicles to the state of departure. I was going to Ibadan, so they now sent me back. They sent us back from from entering all your states. So I've turned back already now. I turned already, so... While these violators appear to have abided by the law, recalcitrant motorists, especially commercial drivers, were taking undue advantage of illegal routes along the corridor to ferry passengers across the states. They are passing under power like inside the bush, and some other they are passing uh, under railway. 
to reach Abekuta. Security chiefs who visited the area to monitor the enforcement are mapping out strategies, including adjustment of checkpoints to address the challenge. In the next um, few days, the mobile court will be ready. Um, if we still have some recalcitrant people that find a way uh, trying to cross border, uh, they will be prosecuted. Ogun and Oyo states currently post relatively high COVID-19 figures. From Bakatari, Adeni Itaewo, NT News. Still on interstate travels, Oyo State Police commanders intercepted travelers on the way from Sokoto to Akore at Obomosho boundary for violation of ban on interstate travel. Kayode Oladosu reports that Governor Shei Makinde of Oyo State has ordered that the travelers undergo COVID-19 test before release. The driver of the vehicle who identified himself as Mohamed Idris said they passed through Bush Path from Sokoto to Niger Kuala then got to Gumosho from where they made their way to Ibadan. Briefing the state governor on their interception, or your state commissioner of police, Shino Lukolu, said the Akure bound travelers were apprehended at Ashijure in Ibadan, the boundary of Oyo and Oshun State. Governor Makinde thereafter directed that the travelers be tested and must receive clean bill of health from COVID-19 before they were sent back to Sakwato. I've asked my SA Arewa to uh, talk to Seriki Sasa and then uh, we'll see if we can keep them you know, uh, within that community isolated uh, until we have their results. Once we have their results, I'm also in discussion with uh, uh, the governor of uh, Sokoto. Uh, we are more than likely going to respond them to uh, Sokoto. As at the time of filing this report, medical team of Oyo State COVID-19 Task Force were on ground to test the travelers for COVID-19. In Ibadan, Kaya Deladishu, NTA News. The Abia State Government says one of the two index cases of COVID-19, the first tested positive, has now tested negative and will soon be discharged from the isolation center in Umwahia. The governor of the state made the disclosure while addressing newsmen after a meeting held with stakeholders on the update of COVID-19 in the state. Chinyere Okoli reports. Gavni Bazu noted that the patient, who is the oldest coronavirus patient in the southeast zone, has shown marked clinical improvement and met the NCDC national criteria for the discharge of COVID-19 patients from isolation centers. According to the governor, all those tested, including those with symptoms of COVID-19, have all proved negative. His remarkable improvement is a positive highlight in the clinical management of this novel disease and we are grateful to the team of healthcare workers directly or indirectly responsible for this victory. On the lockdown exercise in the state, Gavni Bazu gave guidelines towards easing the lockdown, stating that commercial tricycles will carry only two passengers and mini boxes, not more than five passengers, all wearing fixed masks. He noted that schools were to still remain closed while radio classroom initiative to be sustained. He maintained that leaders of churches are not to allow large congregations during each stream of service as buckets of water and hand sanitizers to be provided at the entrance of the church. In Omoaya Chinyere Okoli, NTA News. You're still watching Panorama on NTA. Time now to join Abubakar Usman Akwanga for general ambience and situation on the ease of lockdown in Abuja. Abubakar, if you can hear me clearly, what is the present situation in Abuja with the ease of lockdown? Elizabeth, right now we are at Wusetu. In fact, on the flyover of Wusetu, this place is one of the strategic nerve centers connecting to many uh, locations within the city center of the FCT. And trust me, it's like there was no uh, total lockdown in the city before because people have resumed their normal life. You can, as you can see, vehicles are moving from every direction to unspecified, to attend to their unspecified engagement. And it keeps beating my imagination that people could turn out after the relaxation of total lockdown on the first day. And if we can take this spirit to comply with the total lockdown, I'm sure that it will go a long way to reduce uh, the spread of the deadly virus, I mean, coronavirus pandemic.
put distancing and other guidelines put in place by the government. Are people complying with social distancing and other guidelines put in place by the government? Traffic. Yes, as I said earlier, there is free flow of vehicle and human traffic here. And uh, we notice that most people are not uh, wearing the, the face mask as prescribed by our federal government. In fact, as one of the conditions for the easing of uh, the lockdown. And you, 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 you discover that people are also, you know, attending to other uh, commercial activities. In fact, on our way before uh, uh, getting here, we realized that uh, orcas had already littered the street with their wares, waiting for customers to come and buy. And this is a pointer to one clear fact, that people have been very desperate, you know, to have a window to attend to certain uh, needs of their life. Okay, all right, before I let you go, are people really using a face mask? Are people using the well, face mask? I can't mask? hear you, but I'm sure. Akwanga, are night, like, uh, residents using the face mask? Yes, yes I, I said that is uh, appreciable compliance to the okay. use of face masks, as we can uh, notice from uh, uh, commercial transport, you see passengers, including drivers, you know, complying with the use of uh, facial masks, except pocket of people who are majorly pedestrians. Some of them uh, do not comply with that directive. And I'm sure the security men are carrying out their duty because they are strategically stationed okay, across Abubaka, locations I would like to ask FCT. you this quickly. If you look at the vehicle, how many people do you see at the back seats? Commercial vehicles, yes, to yes, be precise. Uh, in the city centre here. All right, that's what we can take from Abubakar. Let's now take a short break. Panorama continues shortly. Thanks for staying with us. Joining me now in the studio is Director of Special Duties, National Orientation Agency, Mete Ede Kobe, who will be telling us whether the ease of the lockdown implies business as usual for Nigerians or not. Thank you so much for joining us in the studio. Thank you for having me. All right, uh, what is the implication of the ease on lockdown for Nigeria and Nigerians in general, for Nigeria and Nigerians in general? Well, I think uh, the reasons for this action is for government to assess what we have done so far, what we have achieved okay. from the lockdown, and then at the point where we are partially locked down, we want to see the way forward and draw a timeline for the things that will happen. So it is not for us to return to business as usual. It is for us to keep doing the things that we were doing while also doing the things we are now being asked to do, go back to work, do the things that uh, you need to do, but not necessarily to drop the things that we are being put on adversary, that we should clean our, uh, wash our hands, that we should wear our face masks, that we should uh, keep uh, physical distances. That, that doesn't stop that. Even in the workplace, the business space, all this will continue. Will continue. Okay, so how should Nigerians behave at this time, now uh, that is an ease? Exactly the way we've been behaving when we were on lockdown okay. because we were told things to do. And so for, for National Orientation Agency, we believe that the period that we were on lockdown was for us to learn lessons. And so those things that you learned sitting at home, you should put them into practice. You are going to do them. You were working before the lockdown. Now you are going back to work. The things you did at home that worked, you're supposed to do it in the workplace. The things you were doing at home that were right, you should continue to do it. You come to work, shouldn't stop you from washing your hands. You, you have come to work, shouldn't stop you from using your sanitizer. I can see all your uh, missiles uh, run about your table here, oh, which, which means it shouldn't stop us from what we are doing. So we should continue. Those that uh, are bus drivers, commercial, uh, taxi drivers, Uber and all that, whatever you were instructed to do, 
you should continue to do it because if we do not get it right, okay. we, we might just... All right. Uh, your agency is known to sensitize Nigerians. Yeah. Now, what has your agency been doing in this regard? Sensitizing. Talking to Nigerians. Okay. You see, Especially in the grassroots. Yes. Because you need to get to talk to people to believe and trust. Because they will first trust the information okay. and then trust the source of the information. Then they begin to do. So it is not by force or coercion. It is by speaking to their sensibilities and telling them the benefits or the losses that will occur if they do not. And so it takes time. So as you continue, but our advantage is the fact that the people who talk are from that local government. They are from that locality. So they speak that language okay. and they tell the people. The people know them. And so if you lie to them, they can identify you and say, this is the son of John that we all know. Why would he tell us this? Okay. So you are talking to somebody who is your child, your nephew, your niece, or but you are related. Okay. Uh, you know, uh, COVID-19 has been able to redefine human interaction mm -hmm. recently. Now, and some still don't believe that this disease exists. Yeah. How do we change the mindset? You keep talking. And I'm glad we are doing this. As okay. we keep talking, you keep communicating, trying to tell people. And things are happening that are beginning to tell people or show people that this thing is for real. Some do not believe. Yes. But that's the human mind. If you like... You can, you can check. You go to church every Sunday. It's not because you didn't hear what they said last Sunday. You went to the mosque on Friday, and you're going to go again on Friday. Not necessarily because you did not hear what they said, but it is something that is continuous orientation and reorientation. Okay. And you keep on till if you can capture the mind of a person to understand and believe the rightness and appropriateness of a thing, then you have captured everything. Until we do that, it becomes difficult. So that's why we are saying traditional rulers, opinion molders, people that they listen to. You can see that we have, people are using different modes, means, to talk to the people. For the young people, they use a, a artist. They use a, so these are people they like. So they want to believe that if this person is talking about it, then it must be true. And so they believe there are people you can catch get convinced from that way. Okay, before I let you go, um, I believe with time, students will go back to school. What role would uh, your agency be playing to ensure that this social distancing is observed, children wash their hands, they soap, they sanitizers for them to use? Well, I want to believe that long before now, and even some of us who were in school, not to 40 years ago, you, even where there's no tap, your, your teacher will put a bowl of water, water. in front of the classroom, classroom, put soap there. So where the difference now would be you don't all wash in the same bowl, but that you pour the water, you put your hand under a running, water. running that water. That would be a, the difference. Otherwise, the whole idea of personal hygiene and sanitation what existed. And so what we have to say is, please, do it this way. Conscious effort. Conscious effort. You know, even in our traditional settings, when we want to eat, everybody washes their hand in one bowl, and then they use those same hands to dip inside the same bowl to eat. And we are saying, that is uh, very good. The, the principle is good. But this time, this is how we do it, now. under the running water. Now. Now. All right, I want to thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming. Charles thank you today. very much for having me. Thank you very much. Yes. As part of efforts to cushion the effects of the sit-at-home order, FCT administration has given 600,000 packs of food items to two major religious bodies in the FCT. Presenting the palliatives, FCT Minister of State Ramato Tijani Aliu urged them to ensure that all laws are adhered to by both sides. Ifai Izumba tells us more. Various food items were donated as relief against COVID-19 adverse effects by the FCT administration, which the Minister of State, Ramatutijani Aliu, described as an effort to impact on the people across all segments of the society to ensure the palliative distribution of items by government is meaningful. You know, COVID-19 scored in this country and in the federal capital territory will be over in no distant time. But to this end, we may also share this with our people. Receiving the items, the representatives of religious organizations appreciated the FCT administration for extending a hand of fellowship to them. They assured the minister that they will continue to sensitize their people on the implications of COVID-19. The imams are always 
online, talking to people concerning this COVID-19 pandemic. We invited medical doctors who are specialized in the field. They educate us on what it is and how it will be prevented. And we take it as a duty. So we want to say we will continue to support the government in uh, reaching out to our people with the necessary information. But nevertheless, also we are grateful for this hand of fellowship extended to the Christian community. And uh, we are assuring you on behalf of the leadership of CAN and FCT that we will do justice. They also promised to take the items to those who are in need of it in Abuja, Ifani, Isumba, and Tinis. Still on containment, the North East Development Commission has warned all the agencies of government has brought palliatives and medical supplies worth millions of naira to Gumbi State to help cushion the impact of the restrictions put in place to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Emmanuel Akila reports. Some of the measures put in place to prevent further spread of the coronavirus pandemic in Gumbi State include closure of the state borders, ban on social gatherings, closure of markets and business premises to ensure social distancing and other advisory measures. For those who are daily income earners, these measures would result in immediate economic impacts. Hence the need for government's quick intervention to reduce the hardship on the vulnerable people in the country. We thank Mr. President for thinking of how to alleviate the problem that we find ourselves. That the Notice the Government Commission under General Tarpa has thought it wise to come with consumer goods occasioned by the need that people will have because of the pandemic will remain great. The palliatives brought by the Northeast Development Commission include thousands of bags of rice, maize, beans, spaghetti, seasonings, and other food materials, while the medical equipment include infrared thermometers, surgical and face mask, and two brand new ambulances. All the shops and the farming activity have stopped. That means people find it difficult to feed. That means these palliatives is in the right place at the right time. The NEDC had brought personal protective equipment and other medical supplies to the Gumbi state government to help fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. In Gumbi, Emmanuel Akila, NT News. Next is a quick look at the weather picture for Nigeria and other cities around the world. And that's Panorama today. Thank you so much for being a part of it. From the crew, keep staying safe.